Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to do a video today on something specific I because I've had a lot of questions lately about this, and I think it's really important. And I want to get into soul contracts. But So I want to talk about what soul contracts are, but even more specific, I want to get into what happens when you have a soul contract with somebody and they don't hold up their end of the bargain. What do you do then? And I also want to get into the notion of enemies or, you know, someone that's in your life that um, I just, yeah, I think enemy is the right word because I did a post on this recently and, um, and I want to explain it a little bit more because technically, if we have soul contracts with people to be our antagonists, for example, do we truly have an enemy? Um, and I want to talk about that a little bit. So starting with soul contracts, what are our um, what are our agreements that we make with each other before we come into life? So first of all, if we take it on a real macro scale, I believe that we have soul groups and soul groups are um, a collection of souls that travel life after life together and they tend to have interchanging roles, but they are together in a lot of different lifetimes. So it's kind of like a soul group, which you could also call a soul family. Um, sometimes, sometimes people refer to it as a soul family. So let's say there's a group of maybe five, maybe there could be seven, maybe there could be 12 or more, maybe 20. And every life you're coming together and you're just mixing up the roles. So, you know, you might be, the, there, there might be mom, dad, and children and grandparents and um, close family friends, and then you shuffle. And in another life, um, the role people take on different roles. So in this, in the next life, instead of being the child, the sibling, there'll be a parent. And instead of being a parent, it might be the uncle or the, the grandparent or something. So hopefully that makes sense. So that I see that a lot. And it's not just about family. It could be friends. So, um, I've seen this with, uh, with clients that I've done sessions with, and they have like a tight knit, um, group of friends and I say oh you've had a lot of you know you guys have had a lot of lifetimes together and this life you guys are a group of friends and then in another life um, you have been siblings and in another life you've been in the same community serving different roles so it's not just about um, family uh, blood relation family it could just be you chose to come into these certain lives with the same souls network of souls to learn that collectively as a group but also um, individually, like I want to know what it's like to be your daughter in one life. And then the next life, I'm going to be your mother and I'm going to see what it's like to be, uh, you know, the struggles it's like, because it's hard for us to understand what it's like to be the role of the parent when we are always the child. So we got to switch it up sometimes. So that is, um, I, I believe that's how uh, our soul groups kind of navigate. And of course, that's not just on earth. That could be um, in other planets and other places. It's not just here in, in this planet and it can also be in different dimensions we have um soul groups that grab uh gravitate to uh different um incarnations in in you know fifth density consciousness in the fifth dimension or uh, maybe they're an inner earth or maybe they're 11th dimensional um light beings uh traveling through the different universes and together um as what's the word i'm trying to think of as um explorers so so we're not limiting it just to humans but for this conversation let's let's talk about humans here specifically because that's what we uh are, are navigating through the challenges of that right now so if you take all of that um i also believe that there are we have historically um had karma um but see the thing about karma is it has been really manipulated and um there's so many lies about the karma, but there's also 3D influence. So karma, the, the, the simplest way to express karma is um, you do something, there's an energy exchange. So if uh, there's a pause, if I do something positive to someone else, then I might attract something positive or similar frequency back. If I do some a negative act and I portray project negative energy out to somebody, then it's likely that that is the energy that I'm going to re get re in return. That's why we hear the eye for an eye. If we get really literal in the physical sense, then if I kill somebody, then in the next life, 
um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to experience what that's like to be killed now, uh, uh, to be on the other end of that. Um, so I believe that we have soul contracts that we agree to come in and say, okay, I was a really horrible parent to you this life. So I'd love to come in as your child and experience what it's like to be on the other end and you be my parent this time. So it's not really like a negative karma. It's just learning and growing and evolving as, as conscious beings and experiencing different roles, different variations, things like that. Then there is a negative aspect of karma, which I believe is imprinted through 3D interference and influence where we have that, um, like the really dark aspect of that. But the problem with that kind of generated karma is when it's influenced by 3D um, interference, um, entity influence, uh, because we have a lot of entities in, um, that influence us, especially in the in the 3D. And we have all the programming and all the manip manip <laughs> manipulation um, in this reality, we can generate this negative karma. And so the thing about it is, is it's like, I didn't sign up to come in and be murdered by somebody. Um, I really didn't. And I, and that's the truth. Not everybody signed up to be murdered. If that was for, for that example, sometimes there is 3d interference. Maybe you're a light being and you had a really important life and dark beings know that about you. So they temporarily hijack a low vibrational being that they know they can manipulate into doing a heinous act. And in that moment, they take over that being and influence them to murder somebody. And that wasn't planned. So not 100% of everything that happens in our reality is planned. I do. I am a believer that of um, oh, what's it called? I'm a believer in the fact that there are no coincidences and there are no accidents for the most part. But things get really tricky when we're in the 3D and not everything is planned. That's why we have the freak accidents or the things that um, are out of our control because we are through manipulation and the interference, as I just explained, because there is a heavy energy around us in the 3D and we are heavily bombarded by entities trying to loosh off of us, trying to take over us. And that's what, why we have the, the idea of the NPCs, the non-player characters, which for the most part, I've explained this before, are people just like you and me who have had a lot of traumas and eventually an entity takes over and the soul of the person is just hanging out in the background and has no rights anymore. They really just lost the battle and they're just not in control at all. So the person that you know is no longer there because an entity has now taken over control of that person. And um, now the entities that free reign to do whatever they want with the person. And then they start doing these horribly go on criminal sprees and all these horrible things. I don't believe in that sense that that was the plan of that person. So not everything is a coincidence, but I think a majority of the time it is. Now, when we get into soul contracts and we get into roles, let's say as a soul, I want to experience what it's like to be betrayed. I really want to feel that energy of betrayal and how am I, you know, when your plan, when your soul is planning this life, it's, it sounds real easy. Well, eh, that's not a big deal. It's like us watching a movie and, and watching characters do whatever they're doing. And I'm, and we're thinking to ourselves, well, if it was me, I would do that. Oh, no, no, I would do that. That's wrong. It's real easy for us to say those things. But when we're in the situation, things are different <laughs> because we're actually experiencing it firsthand. And we may do the complete opposite of what we think we would have done. And so it's really easy for us over there to say, oh, when I come in, um, you betray me. And I'll learn this lesson really quick and we'll move on and we'll be best friends later and whatever, whatever the dy dynamics are. So your other soul partner, friend, family member, whatever you're in your soul group will say, all right, I'll volunteer to be your boyfriend in that in this life we're going into. And I'm going to be a narcissist and I'm going to be judgmental and I'm, I'm going to abuse you a little bit. And so you can experience all of these things that you've signed up for, and then I'll cheat on you and I'll betray you. And you're going to, your lesson in this life is to experience it, to absorb it, to process it. And then, you know, in theory, break up with the person and move on and learn something from it and grow. And then the next relationship you attract 
uh, is some is something someone completely different, someone more in alignment with yourself. Now, obviously, that's blueprints of a grand plan. There, many things can go wrong, and we do leave um, ability for free will uh, to be inserted. And so, we have the grand blueprint um, of the of the journey of betrayal, and you know, person A and person B are going to come in together, and great. There, there should be no resentment or so no hatred um, or no judgment when when this is all said and done and when they leave the life, the two souls are like, thank you so much for, for the experience. You really helped me learn about betrayal and this and that. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm making this very broad. Now what ends up happening because we are in 3D, because there's so much 3D influence and interference and so many traumas people experience their souls become fragmented here and we forget we are divine beings and we think we actually think we are pieces of, you know, and we believe that we're not good enough and all these things. And we have the uh, voice of God technology tell, feeding us lies uh, about ourselves and we're not good enough and you don't deserve anyone better. So when we're bombarded with all of these lies and these manipulation tactics, then person A and B coming in to learn about betrayal suddenly, um, are getting more than they bargained for. And now they are, you know, the person that's supposed to be the betrayer um, is maybe now they, they're they hooked on drugs because of traumas that they went through or they're not in the right headspace. And so they really play the role of narcissist like next level. And they, they're they now, they're just maybe even more, maybe they weren't supposed to be physically abusive and now they become, and they've got entity attachments and they're just, they have rage from uh, maybe abuse from their own family and, and so many things that variables that we didn't think about or didn't factor in ahead of time, right? That weren't, plus that's not part of the free will. That was when you come in, you have free will and all of these things shift. The person that is experiencing the relationship um, is not equipped now to um, endure this level of abuse. And maybe this person was also abused um, by another family member, or there's 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 more layers to it that have have amplified uh, the the trauma, whether it was planned or not. This the, maybe this person planned to have multiple traumas. The point is is that things amplify when they come here, and now person A and person B end up resenting each other. There's hatred, maybe even um, physical abuse might turn into a you know attempt at murdering the, the other person or who knows? And the, the other person is feeling very trapped and things get completely convoluted and messed up. And maybe the person never leaves that person and they don't learn anything. And they and this woman stays in an abusive relationship her entire life, gets sucked into a lower karma wheel. And then now she's just had endured 10 lives after another of narcissistic, really dissociated abuse. And now her and him are in this, these two souls are in an intertangled web of many lifetimes replaying the same thing until they can get out of it. And then it's a cycle. They've generated a cycle now. So that's just one example of thousands I can give you of scenarios. Maybe that woman breaks up with that guy, but then a but now feels worthless and believes the things that he has said to her. And so she doesn't believe she deserves anyone else. And now she just attracts more abusive, narcissistic um, addicts, let's say. And it just continues and continues. So how do we navigate these spiritual soul contracts, knowing everything that I just mentioned um, and actually living in that scenario? Well, what I've learned in my life through my traumas and my soul contracts, um, I believe that my struggles specifically, I'll share mine. I don't think that I'm, I came into struggle or to learn about relationships. I'm very lucky to have the most caring best friend of a husband I could ever have. And we've been together over 20 years. What I do struggle with is friendships. Um, I've been betrayed, going back to betrayal, um, not in a romantic way, but I've been betrayed. I can't even count how many times by people in my life, my whole life that I thought were friends, both more women than men, but both men and women friendships, not romantic. And I, and I grow from each experience and I learn in the beginning, I used to think something was wrong with me. Um, and, 
what was I doing wrong and all of these things. And I hated those people. You know, I used to have this reputation of, I love elephants so much because they're like, Sherry, you're like an elephant. You never forget. Um, Cause I would never forgive. And I would never forget anything you did to me and you would be dead to me immediately if you hurt me. And that's a heavy weight to put on yourself. So over the years I have, I have learned. And so each time it still happens, I'm betrayed. I react lighter every single time. And I, and I act and I've learned from those experiences. So now when it happens, I say immediately, okay, what, are, what am I learning from this? And I thank that person, maybe, maybe not physically because we might not be talking anymore, but I thank the soul of the person saying, you know what? Um, I appreciate what we came in to do together and I forgive you. And then I move on and it's getting, it gets easier and easier and easier. So perhaps I'm learning about betrayal. Perhaps I needed to be prepared for that because of the type of work that I do and that I'm doing now and that I'll continue to do that I needed to have these interpersonal conflicts and real, and so that I would learn about trust and boundaries and all of these things so that how I navigate things today is very different than I did even five years ago, 10 years ago, and definitely 20, 25 years ago. So we learn and grow from that. So it's very challenging to forgive somebody, but if we think about it, if we, first of all, if you take the charged emotion out of it and you just think to yourself, okay, let me just be neutral and think about it. If I have a soul contract with this person, what is what are they learning from me? What am I learning from them? What can I teach them? What are they teaching me? Like all of these different things. And you think about it just very consciously. You take a moment to just, okay, now I, under, now I understand, now I know. And then what you do with that information moving forward is what everyone is experiencing right now. If you take the rage, the pissed off, you know, like, oh, I can't believe you're frustrated. I can't believe you. How could you do this to me? Like, take all of that out, take a breath and say, all right, I, I got it. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep living my life. And I'm going to let this be a catalyst to be a better version of myself, to, to understand my struggles and their struggles, et cetera, et cetera. It's very hard to do this. But this is happening, I think, for everybody. I rarely say things in 100%, but I, I mean, I can't imagine anybody not experiencing some level of this right now in their life. And so um, I talked about going into hermit mode right now and, and how I think it's really wise for us to just retract a little bit and recluse, and that's okay, and not to get mad at each other if we need space and boundaries, things like that, because we're, we're all dealing with heavy stuff. We're all trying to heal. We're all trying to release. And it's really hard to do that with a lot of different people around. So I think that it's wise that we just create boundaries energetically and physically as well um, with the people in our life, whether they're your children, your spouse, your parents, friends, neighbors, coworkers, whatever. And we should mutually respect each other's boundaries because we understand that everyone is going through their own level of activation, healing, and awakening and require their own boundaries, compassion, and non-judgment. And so if we look at the really interpersonal relationships that we have with everybody as a learning opportunity, then we are less likely to be judgmental and more mindful and more conscious of our relationships and the roles that we're playing in each other's lives. And then we are filled with gratitude and less hate. Say, okay, I, I, I am learning something from this. And maybe you're just learning to stand up for yourself. And your role is to kick these people, person, more than one, I don't know, out of your life, stand in your power, say no. And that's, that's all they that they were meant to do in your life. They just came in quickly or, or maybe long-term and you needed to get to a point where you said, I'm done. I'm putting me first. Thank you for the lessons you've taught me. And if that's the nice thing that you can think of saying to them, or you just say it to yourself, you know, in your mind, and then you never see them again. And you just say, contract um, voided, complete, whatever you want to say. And you move on and you are done with that. And you may never see that person again. And that 
is okay. I think that that is the biggest struggle that we have because from young children, we want to attract friends out of survival. We, we want community. We want people to like us. We want to blend in. We want this and that. We want to be normal. All these things that we think about. And now as an adult, I'm like, well, I don't want to blend in. I don't want to be like everybody else. I like myself. I want to be different. I don't care what anyone thinks, you know, those types of things. Um, but as a collective right now, I think we are navigating those challenges in our mind and trying to look at each other in a more conscious, mindful way that we've never done before. We haven't really been taught. So it's, it's very challenging. Um, uh, so my point is, is that I feel like our nature is to not want to push people out of our life because we feel like we're abandoning them. And we have to sometimes look at it as maybe we need to. And it's not abandoned. Don't use the word abandoned. Maybe it's the boundaries. It's what I need for my healing. And I'm sorry, but you can't be in my life right now because this is what I need to heal. And we are on different resonance. We are not in alignment with each other's highest good. And I respect you enough that um, I'm not what you need for your healing either. And so you put responsibility on yourself too. Because I know sometimes that can be a lot for people. And if they're not ready to be around the energy that I put off and they're not ready to heal, they're not going to like me. And I think that's why a lot of I've been betrayed so much in my life by the people that I've been the closest with, because they get to a point where they maybe they're they don't want to be they don't want to heal anymore or they just they need to surround themselves with people that are more in alignment with their current resonance. And so they don't want to be my friend anymore. And then, you know, that's okay. Um, I stopped. I, I Once I relieved myself of the burden of responsibility or that it was my fault, um, it was the big, best thing that ever happened to me. So we have to re release the burden um, that we are responsible for our the people in our life um, and how they evolve, how they grow, how they heal. We cannot take on that burden because we all have free will. And I don't care if the person is your mother, father, child, friend, whatever. You can only do so much. Sometimes we just have to plant the seeds in other people's life and then let them, let it grow. Step back and you did your part. You played your role. You are, maybe you stand back and you hold the space now and then you focus on yourself. That's where we need to do right now as a collective. We need to just hold the space, focus on ourself and those and hope that up until this point, how we've affected those certain people in our life, um, it'll either catch or it won't. But the thing about soul contracts, and this is what I want to talk about that's important, is just because we came into the our lives with with a specific role that we're playing with each other to teach each other something the last part of what i want to talk about today is not everybody always holds up their end of the bargain and that's the thing that we get hung up on because if we are dedicated to a certain person and we know we're in their life for a reason we don't want to give up on them because we know in our heart we're meant to help them and then we get and it's it's a persistent thing that ends up taking us down you know, we end up suffering because we're sacrificing everything for that person. And no matter what we do, they run away or they they don't they don't want it. They don't want to heal. That has nothing to do with you. And I want to be clear about this. This is very important. We cannot control the free will of somebody else. What someone else is carrying, the burden of their traumas, their repressed emotions, and their ability to process and the timing in which they can heal, we are not in control of that. So we don't judge them, but sometimes we have to release them. Sometimes it's okay to say, I'm, I've done enough and now it's up to you. That's very hard to do. And so that is where we are as a collective right now. And I believe it's a very difficult period because even though we have a soul contract with somebody, it doesn't always work out. And again, it has nothing to do with you. Sometimes it's them. Sometimes they are fighting. They are resisting an internal battle that we can't feel. We might on some level energetically connect and, and, 
empathically know God, they're really struggling, but nothing I do is helping. So what we need to do and what I recommend is you just hold the space, you create boundaries, switch your attention back on yourself because the more we work on ourselves, we are is the best investment you can ever make. Invest the time and energy into yourself right now. Go into hermit mode and as much as you can or when you can, because the higher vibration that we are, the best version of us that we can be collectively, if we are all operating in our power, our sovereignty, and in that best version of ourselves, we are more likely to be able to connect with unity, consciousness, have more compassion, build those bridges, work together, shift paradigms, co-create the dynamics, activate and awaken the dormant DNA within us, enhance our abilities, our innate abilities, and definitely deconstruct um, and distort the 3D interference. It doesn't work and you have to go within to do that. So right now, even though we have soul contracts with everybody in your life, even your pets, recognize that we cannot control each other. We cannot say, if it was me, I would do this, I would do that, I would do things differently. That is one of the biggest mistakes I believe parents make because they look at their children and say, if it was me, I would do this. Well, you're not them, they're not you. So you, our job as parents, friends, companions, partners in any relationship is to support the person no matter their choices, even if you don't agree. Um, and even if it looks like they're going down a devastating dark path, we send them love and light because they might need to find themselves in that dark, devastating path. That could be a choice that they need in order to find themselves again. They need to go into the deepest, darkest place to experience the depths of bottoming out so that they can revitalize and awaken and activate in a way that you could never hold their hand while they do it. Sometimes they got to go into that energy by themselves. So it's all about looking at everyone else and recognizing that they're an individual soul with sovereignty and free will, and they are experiencing things for a reason that we may not always understand, and we don't have to. We just hold the space and we support and we, and we try not to judge. And we forgive those that have hurt us because we don't know the types of role that they have willingly taken on to play the antagonist in our life. And so instead of hating them for it, try to learn something from it so that we can move on faster. You may not ever see that person again, but on a soul level, you'll find each other again and you'll thank each other for the exchange. Um, that is what the ascension is about. Everything that I've talked today about is what the ascension is about. That's how we grow as a collective, but more importantly, that's how we grow as individuals, as the consciousness of Sherry and the consciousness of everyone watching this. This is the formula. This is what we focus our attention on right now. Everything else is a distraction and a reality. And I know it's, it's really important, the election coming up and all of these things, but I told you in my video a few weeks ago, what are we being prepared for? And this couple days later, that big event happened. Um, and so we are being prepared for so many things that are out of our control. Um, but if we go within and we focus on being the best version of ourselves, we can handle anything that they try to put at us because all of these traumatic events they're trying to trigger us and instead of being triggered just take a moment and take a breath and be like huh and the more clear-headed you are you start to notice the red flags you'll start to notice the things that don't make sense and you'll be like did anyone else notice that and that didn't seem right and you that's how you break through the illusion and you see beyond the 3d structure so Soul contracts are beautiful. They're necessary. 
but they can also be a distraction if we look at them from the perspective of 3D. So I encourage everyone watching this today, I hope that all of this has made sense. And where, regardless of where you are in your soul contracts with other people, and if those people um, are resisting, just release the burden of control and saying, and say, you know what? They don't want me in their life and I'm not going to be hurt by it. They're going through an inter internal battle that I know nothing about. I can't control it. So I'm just going to surrender and I'm going to keep living my life the best way I can, focusing my attention on the other people in my life. And I wish them well. And I hope that they find their way and create boundaries. If they've hurt you, you can forgive, but also cut them out of your life and say, you know what? You hurt me. I forgive you, but we're done. And I lovingly wish you the best. And I never want to see you again. I mean, you could say it in a different, in any way that feels right. Um, so we are guided to also stand up for ourselves and get our voice back and stand in our power and not be taken advantage of at the same time. All of this is happening. So imagine all of these variables, things that we can control, things that we can't control, all the heightened release that people are experiencing right now. This is a very convoluted um, reality that we are just, it's like I keep getting using the um, the metaphor, like we're all in the washing or the dry, the dryer together, we're just spinning around and we're all in this disaster together. But it's okay because the more we shine our light, the more we go within, the more we focus, we raise our frequency, we can understand each other better. And then we're in the washing machine. Next thing you know, we're holding hands and we're strong and we can't be defeated when we are strong and we connect, we cannot be defeated. But when we are just flopping around in that dryer by, by ourselves, hitting each other, we're pissed off because this person ran into me. Well, they didn't mean to. Uh, and so instead of looking at everyone else, like you hurt me, it's, oh, I am compassionate of your, what you're going through. I'm also going through the same thing. Let's work together. That's how we fight this spiritual war. Um, that's how we understand or understand the soul contracts. And hopefully we can learn something from them and become better versions of ourselves so that we can support the children who need us to stop uh, fighting with each other, coming together, looking at them and saying, how can we support you? Uh, because they are the future and they, they need our help and guidance. But if we can't get our shit together, we can't guide them. So we need to get our ducks in a row um, before we can turn to them and let the, let us guide them because let them guide us rather um, because then we're out of the egocentric mode and we're in the openness uh, mode of I'm open to what you have to say and what you're here to teach us. And I'm not looking at you like a child. I'm looking at you as a, as a, as an ascended being here to um, teach me something because clearly what we've been doing hasn't been working. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. And we're not going to be able to do that if we are in defense. You know, if we're all defensive and angry and bitter with each other. How could we ever look at the children with an open mind, um, willingness and ready to learn something from them? So it starts with us. So we have to help ourselves before we can help them. I think that's all that I wanted to say. So I hope that this made sense. I hope that this video and this information finds all of you well. I don't know when I'll do another video these days. I'm really so busy, but um, when I feel inspired, I just, I drop everything and I just make sure to get it out. And today was one of those days where I said, I have to do this. <laughs> so I hope that it's helped you. And um, yeah, Whew. I think that's it. Um, so I'll see all you guys soon. Bye, everybody.